Zetto here. How you going? Oh, we have got some big topics to discuss today. And um, I'm really excited about this, but I'm not excited at the same time because um, this is a huge topic for everybody at the moment. Um, the coronavirus and the photography industry and what's happening um, is really rocking the world of lots of different people and lots of different things as well. As we've just started, please just pop in a hello if you can see me, if you can hear me, because there's no point in starting if you can't do any of those things. So just um, say g'day, which is good. And it's funny because I can't actually see any comments at all, which is frustrating on my side. Just bear with me for just a moment and I will see what we can do about that which is really, really annoying. All right, we're just, um, sorry guys, I'm just flicking through. I do have comments. That's annoying because I can't actually see them on my screen, which suck. Okay, there's a few people here, 17 people. I wonder if I can comment. Just give me a second, just bear with me for just a moment. A few technical little issues. Show more. I can't actually show comments. I can't actually see anything at all. I can't see the settings, I can't see the comments, I can't see anything, which kind of sucks um, as well. Oh, three new comments. I can't see anything on my screen. Okay, anyway, let's just, let's just roll with this. I'll have to look at it on my phone, but you know, technology these days, we're all good. Okay, here for a good time, not a long time. I don't want to take up heaps of your time, but I do want to get started and get cracking straight away. One thing I will say, um, I have put this on the Mark Rizzetto coaching page because I would love for you to share it around. I'd love to you to give it to people. I think there's heaps and heaps of content of words of wisdom here as well. Um, and I'm just going to dive straight into it. Okay, so for those people that don't know me, my name's Mark Rosetto. I'm a double master photographer with the AIPP, um, qualified life and business coach, NLP practitioner. Um, I was a photographer down in Melbourne for over 10 years. Um, we were photographing about 500 families a year and um, shooting weddings as well. I sold that business and moved to Queensland for three years and now I'm currently living and working in Cambodia as a non-for-profit role. Um, so I've been asked by suppliers and photographers to give some advice and guidance and reassurance to us as photographers on what's happening with the coronavirus today and try to help you ride it out and ride the, the waves of what is actually happening as well. So I'm just gonna move something on my screen. Rather than me looking up to the side, I can look at you guys directly as well because I've got lots of notes here. I'm gonna put that here. Now, what I can see, I can see your lights and your things, but what I cannot see, I can't see your comments, which is super frustrating right now, but that's okay. All right, so the most common things I'm getting asked is how to manage cancellation requests, ideas on, on acquiring new business to offset the loss, ideas to keep the sales funnel full, what to do about the weddings and being pushed back, how to capitalize on your headshots, portraits, and other genres, create a plan moving forward, making sure that the business is sustainable through the outbreak, money issues, schooling, client spending, fearing anxiety, the unknown, and how to boost your income. So I'm gonna run through all these key points. And as you can see, it's a mishmash and it's a gray area between. So it's not just gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, ten. 10. There's gonna be a little bit of conversation there. Please feel free to ask and um, put some conversation in. And um, but to be honest, I can't really see your comments properly. Anyway, sorry. Um, there's a disclaimer. The disclaimer is: this is my opinion of the information and the knowledge that I have as of the 18th of uh, March. Okay, things are moving super, 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 super fast. So things are changing quickly. But there's a lot of information that I'm going to give here, whether it's the best case scenario or the worst case scenario, which is pretty much from the other signs of the world, a lockdown completely and nobody's going anywhere, but there's still lots of things to consider. So the key point to this, it's not going to go away in the short term at all. It could be three months, it could be six months, it could be 12 months, it could be 18 months. 
who knows? But what you need to do is put your business in a bit of a survival mode and work behind the scenes and the stuff that you know that when, when the worst is over, we can hit the ground running. It might only be two months. Who knows? It might only be six weeks. No one's got the crystal ball about that. What I would encourage you to, to do though within your life and within your business is be people centric. Look after your family, look after your clients, look after your suppliers, support each other. Goodwill will go a long way in moments like this, okay? One thing is it's a great time to reevaluate your business. Your business is doing all, um, do all the behind the scenes things that you've always wanted to do but you just don't get time to get around to doing it, okay? Anything that you wish you had more time for, you're going to have more time. So it's time to work on the business and not in the business. Now I'm gonna talk a lot about upgrading your websites and marketing and blogging and branding and passive marketing, but that's more on that kind of later. Um, for some people, it's actually business as usual, which is the weirdest thing ever. Some people hasn't, they haven't seen a change. Now, depending on your country, depending on your town, some people is like, do you know what? People are still coming in for family portraits. People are still coming in for newborns. I had a $1,500 sale. I've got bookings coming through and it's business as usual. And other people, the whole world has fallen apart and everybody's canceling and the effect is completely different. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this is such a volatile space and um, everyone's completely kind of different. The one thing I would say that everything you know about your business, about your clients, about their buying patterns is more unpredictable and volatile than ever. So sometimes you're just gonna have to ride the waves. Some things will work, some things won't, just like other business choices, but all those stats that you had in, in the past with conversion rates and all that kind of thing, it's irrelevant now because really, everybody's in a different headspace. It's really time to be flexible and agile and take a, a notice of what's going on around you in your town specifically and other businesses and other industries. One thing is though, it's a great opportunity to reset your business, okay? Um, in terms you can press stop, you can reset, you can redefine and it's a great time to kind of stop and breathe at the same time, all right? Um, one thing I would say, please don't fall into the trap of selling yourself short and discounting just to get the gig. Now, I wrote this about a, about a, probably about a week ago on saying that now, you know, race, you'll be on a race to the bottom for the cheaper price, but if you need to put food on the table to feed yourself and keep your head, like there's things that you just kind of got to do. One thing I would say, is that it's not all doom and gloom at the same time. In 2009, when the GFC came and wiped out half of the world's economy, <laughs> I started my photography business in 2009. And a lot of people were like, you are crazy, what are you doing? So it's kind of like, like what I did in 2009 specifically, 2008, 2009, is I set up so much time with the setup and the preparation of, of, of having a successful business. So when the GFC was over, because I always knew I was gonna do this either way, I came out shining on the other end, which I did. One thing that is quite interesting is to um, planning and preparation, okay? <laughs> Everyone's answering their phone, Karina, because they're at home, that is true. But they want to talk to someone and not their kids. Anyway, um, one thing I will say is planning and preparation. Now, I know that no one can foresee this kind of happening. No one can predict this. You just can't. You can't plan and prepare something like this. This is just absolutely crazy. All right. But one thing I would say that good business practicing and planning for worst case scenario goes a long way. If you think about it, okay. Think about from like people who have, live in a cyclone area, in a flood area, in a fire area. We've just had fires in Australia and then floods in Australia and now this. Anyone that has been in those drought areas for a long time, they know that they have to plan for the worst when it comes, if it comes at any stage. They prepare and make sure that they've got everything they need to run a sustainable, successful uh, business. They have their equipment set up. They have finances set up. They have cleared their land and all those different type of 
things, right? So what happened, and I don't want to go too political here, but some of the uh, farmers that have had generational farmers of drought have prepared and, and, and uh, salary sacrificed and, and got jobs in other ways, like um, the wife is owning a cafe in the town or something like that um, to prop up some income. Where people who are moving new into the area of a cyclone, flood, fire, drought, whatever it is, they don't have the experience of the knowledge of in the past, so they don't prepare as well in the future. So why am I saying this? A lot of photographers that have been around for 5 to 10 to 20 to 30 years, this is another blimp in the system. This is another, this is just another kind of like a dip, all right? And one of the things that you'll find is that the people that have been around longer are a little bit more set up and prepared financially as well for people that have been around shorter. Does that make sense? I'd love to get some comments on that. So planning and preparation, but again, no one could predict any of this, all right? But this is where you have reserves in the bank to make sure that unforeseen circumstances with health, with business and everything else can be looked after. Okay, so the first thing I wanna kinda of tackle is I wanna tackle fear, emotion and anxiety. This is really uncertain times and it's really easy to get into a negative downhill slide spiral. So try to stay positive and see the positive in as much as you can, okay? Your mental health, anxiety, trauma, stress, PSD, fears, phobias, and overwhelm are going to be heightened enormously. So I guess we need to support each other as photographers, as husbands, as wives, as uncles, as aunties, as people who are your next door neighbors, people down the street. Please, please, please just be mindful and help people out when they need some help. The other part is you still have a life to live. You still have family. Reconnect with each other. If you are going to be quarantined for two weeks, bring out Monopoly. Oh, maybe don't because then you might have to call an ambulance on the winner. Um, but, you know, um, spend family times, great quality, great conversation. If you live on a farm, get the bonfire out, you know hang out with your family and live your life still because you know you can go for a bushwalk you can swim in the ocean if you own a boat go fishing for the day you know live your life still as well okay um people first protect yourself protect your business um it'll go a long way you need to write this out and don't put extra stress on your family when you don't need to so if your kid wants to watch TV, I'm not saying to let them get away with it all, but just kind of like, just relax a little bit. Like, just everyone's got to just chill a little bit, obviously within kind of reason. Okay, family issues, client spending, global money issues, and, and kids homeschool. Consider, and this is going to be upset for a lot of people here, um, consider, um, a separate income stream. So if photography is your thing, like commercial photography or your wedding photography, this is really unpredictable. So what I'm trying to say is when you look at um, a separate income stream, I'm meaning look at graphic design, look at the bookkeeping you were doing, look at going back to homeschooling, kind of teaching, think outside the box and kind of think a little bit in terms of like, what else can you do to prop the money up? Where else can you get some finance if you need that, okay? Um, graphic design, web design, any online business area, isogenics for those people that are into that thing. If you've got a friend who's a PT, I'll be doing virtual training sessions, something like that, all right? It's one of those things that, like, consider a separate income. Now, also stop unnecessary spending and revisit your expenditures. More on cost of goods of business and all that, cost of doing business after. But um, just stop your spending, not stop, obviously don't stop spending, but just be mindful. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, if you're stressed about homeschooling, all right? I've got two kids, six and nine now, who, oh my goodness, drive me nuts inside. Now, I am not going to stress out and be a Nazi with their homeschooling at the moment because I physically and mentally cannot handle that.
but what I'm going to be doing is making sure that um, yes, there's homeschooling, and but I don't want to stress myself out. I don't want to stress the kids out. If they miss two weeks of school, whatever, as long as they're doing them kind of math, uh, their maths, their reading, and some kind of writing, they'll be fine. They're not going to fall behind to a pit of well, whatever. Um, expect the loss of income, there will be a dip of income, but how much of a dip is always un unknown and it really depends on you and your uh, business. Manage your savings and live within your means. Protect the people in your world. If you, what I mean by that, if you need to close the studio because you have a high risk child or you're a high risk health, then that's what you need to do. If your family is low risk, we are very healthy, we've got no issues at all. Um, we're quite happy to see people, but a lot of people aren't happy to see people. So just make sure that you understand your boundaries, okay? We had a discussion for the Marcy Marketing call about um, um, opening up your business still, and is it irresponsible and things like that. Now, I would say that I don't think people are gonna look down at you if you have your business open still, but I don't think people are gonna look down at you if you close your business. So what I mean by that is whether you have your business, photography business open or closed is up to you, but just be very mindful of the people who you are going to be exposing yourself to and their thoughts about that. There's two big issues I wanted to cover, fear, anxiety, emotions, and family issues. I hope that helps. Now let's get on to some photography, all right? Now, in-person sales. Do a same day IPS, try to avoid contact with people, try to avoid people coming back a different day. If you can do the same day in-person sales, save people coming back a different day because you don't know when they're gonna come out of the house nets. Online in-person sales via, via uh, Skype or the other program as well. Um, Zoom is great. Um, treat it just like a normal in-person sales. The one thing that you will need to do is have greater client education beforehand. They need to make sure they know the products and what the system is and what the flow is and how it works. Use Zoom, I think it's cool. Practice your in-person sales to yourself uh, first, then treat them just like a normal person and make sure you don't skip any steps. Oh, I'm just... Um, I love this advice. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Cancellations post and postponements. I would strongly recommend this. Send a blog, an email, a website link, or a write-up on what you're doing to be safe within your photography business. This is where you need to just be open and just be honest. Are you open? Are you booked in advance? Are you closed? What are your cleaning situations? What are you doing to prevent this spread? What, who's in your home? Um, all those different things and put it in an email so people can be aware of what your cleaning per, per, um, and coronavirus um, procedures are. If you don't want any bookings for the next three to six months, just say, due to the virus and myself being a high risk as I have asthma, I've decided to close the studio until further notice but you will notice we will be online a lot. I am not closing the studio forever. I just can't be exposed to people for the health of myself or my child or my mum or whoever it is. Be open, be honest, be very clear. One thing you need to know though, make sure that you'll get your cleaning source, your sources of information correct and put it to the links and the government links and the cleaning links in that the website as well, so you can make sure that everything's coming from a place that is um, of kind of good terms, all right? Um, for those people, you most likely, uh, I've, got, I've lost where I am. Um, you, won't, you won't be able to reason with people that don't wanna come in. So if they wanna cancel, they're just gonna cancel. All right, they're just gonna cancel for whatever reason. You won't be out of reason with them. Some people is, is like, this is awesome, I'm free, let's go and do it. Let's go and have a, do the photo shoot while I can. And um, let's, go, let's go outdoors. Just say you're a studio that was all indoors and for some people, people are germaphobed by the indoor process. Take people outdoors, go to fresh air. 
let them know that you've got a 7200 zoom lens and you don't even have to be within 10 meters of each other. You can still do the family portrait, all right? So um, if that's going to overcome. So what really people are cancelling because they've got the fears of not knowing what to do, how it works, and they're scared. So you need to respect that. What I would suggest is to extend all gift vouchers, extend all shoots. I'm going to talk about weddings in a moment, but extend the gift vouchers. Do it for 12 months, 6 months, 8 months, till the end of the year. Don't penalise on someone as well. Don't penalise someone for being cautious and it's like, well, I've taken your booking deposit. Um, in Alan Moyle's words, don't be a dick. Like, just this is... This is tough times, just say absolutely fine, I can't refund the deposit, you might have that in your policy, but we'll move it to a different day in the future, or we're going to sit on it and have a waiting list, okay? So with the cancellations, postponements, postpone them, um, people are going to cancel through fear, so it might be just an education thing where they go, oh, in that case, we'll just go ahead, we'll go ahead still, all right? Um, yeah, and Karina, yeah, you can't ca you can't reason with people that want to cancel. If they want to cancel, you just go, yes, that's fine, no worries. Weddings, oh, weddings, my goodness. To be honest, you can't do much about this. The government is actually closing all venues and weddings and spaces, like, and the media is saying to cancel. You can't really do much with the weddings. Again, with the cancellation policies, you can hold on to the deposit or you can refund it as good... Uh, will when they come back. This is a personal thing. It's up to you. But um, m hold the deposit, move to another date, put it in the waiting list. Um, they have enough to deal with, with their families traveling, with all the other um, cancellations of the entire day. Again, don't be a dick. Don't make it stressful. They just want an easy out. Give them the easy out. And, and, and But obviously, be like, hey, I'm here from you. What I would recommend with your weddings is be in touch with your weddings, not by email, a phone call. Hey, it's Mark, this is what's happening, this is what's going on, how are you feeling? I'm there for you whenever you want to rebook. If I have that date available, the booking transfer will go straight to that date. If that date has been taken, I will refund it for you. Like, be genuine, be people centric. You're going to hear me say that quite a lot. Um, yeah, poor wedding photographers. For some reason, Karina, you're the one whose comments I'm kind of uh, reading. Um, all right, and just it is what it is. You can't do much about it. There's no fail safe here. Everyone is hurting in that space. But this is what it comes down to good planning for the weddings and having finance there to back you up in your business and preparation beforehand. But I will say, here's some ways to boost your income. Online IPS for past clients, for current clients, for new clients, okay? So if you get, um, if you wanna go, hey, due to everyone being inside, cause I miss you, Karina. Oh. Um, due to everyone being inside, I'm going to be offering um, little sales consults for anyone who wants to order that piece of artwork, there's going to be a special discount for current clients. Um, for current clients, obviously new clients, you can't do an online ordering for IPS because you haven't done photos yet. But you can tell people that's what we're doing so you can shoot at the beach and you can do that after. Okay? Um, oh, Tanner, I'd love to offer you guys a $50 discount for same day IPS class. Good job. Okay, um, be open to other photographer genres. Diversify your shooting. Do you know what's going to boom? A, newborns in nine to 12 kind of months because everyone's gonna be like, <laughs> um, getting busy. Um, newborns, but your businesses, businesses around you and your business are all going through the same situation. They're all dipping, they're all refining, they're all systemizing, they're all streamlining, they're cleaning up their businesses. So maybe, just maybe a photographer genre that you haven't worked out yet is your personal branding, your headshots, your business branding. Like have a look at some other genres to prop up your income as well. Discount on products to previous clients. I know that Brilliant Prints have a love heart kind of 
kind of like a metal print coming out for Mother's Day. So you can do a little Mother's Day trinkets and they can be posted directly to the client so you don't have to be in touch with the client as well. Um, small elopements are still going ahead. Yes, that's correct. Karina, unbelievable. Um, spending is going to be tight. So your high ticket items. Now, I'm not saying this is everyone, but I'm like majority. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Ah, your high ticket items of a $5,000 portrait sale or $10,000 wedding might not be on the horizon, but like Tash just said, maybe it's an elopement, smaller weddings that people that kind of like, you know what, the world's going to go around, I want to get married still, is going to be quite nice. Oh, my cousin's here, Kim, hey Kim. Um, you know, maybe it's elopements, maybe it's doing some kind of, kind of mini shoots where the cost of the dollar is a bit cheaper so your high ticket items aren't going to blow people out of the water because they don't want to be spending at the moment as well marketing hope you're enjoying this please give me some feedback if you're enjoying this i'm trying to be as real as i possibly can i've got two more pages left marketing this is my number one thing and this is something that i'm truly passionate about and anyone that knows me for five minutes about photography is marketing the one thing i will say you stay top of mind, be consistent, and keep your business and brand exposure high. <laughs> Do not stop marketing. What I, what I mean by marketing too, do not stop marketing. You might not do family of the season and a Mother's Day special and a major giveaway. This is where you need to up your passive marketing game. You need to be top of mind. This whole social media is full of freaking doom and gloom and shit that no one wants to see it and no one wants to read it. They are desperate trying to find a positive story, a funny story, something that you can laugh at, something that you can be lightened at, something that you can, like, your passive marketing game really needs to be increased quite a lot. So, what I'm saying by that, when this passes over, you already have an audience hot to trot, ready to go. You need to make sure that your passive marketing game stays high. What does that mean? Blogging, direct emails, Redo your product videos, redo your welcome videos, talk about your props, update your website, portfolio, CRM, workflow, finish the master of the marketing course. For those people in the master of marketing course, they say they do not have time, you've got no excuses. Finish the master marketing course. Look at headshots, look at your SEO, look at your social media planning, all right? One thing that you would have learned very quickly from here, and I want you to comment if anybody has was or was supposed to book in for any expos, wedding expos, baby expos, newborn expos, please write in the comments below. And then this is my next part that I'm gonna be a bit of tough love at the same time, is that when it comes to marketing, don't have all your eggs in the one basket. This is why you need five to 12 to 15 marketing strategies happening at any one time because just like that, an expo can go and you have lost $50,000, $100,000 worth of clients. Your third party marketing has gone. You need other ways to diversify your marketing so you can make sure that you have always got leads coming in from different sources. So now this is a catastrophic, huge thing that's happened, but in terms of just a uh, all in eggs in one basket with marketing. If you're just a third party marketer, if you're just a school marketer, a fundraiser marketer, um, I just do kind of pop-ins, I just do headshots, I just do this, you're gonna get yourself into trouble. Okay, put time and effort into um, scheduling your marketing for the year. You know, you should really, now anyone in the master marketing course, you would have that big whiteboard of a 12 month marketing plan. You should really put all, be, your marketing plan should be so squeaky tight that all you have to do is execute the plan, all right? This is also a great opportunity for business and content creation for you. Talk about products. Now, Tash, Natasha Marsh did an amazing video of her daughter 
pretending to be pregnant with a balloon and going through the client experience and did it at home and got lots of shits and giggles and laughs and it was amazing. Tash, if you can put that video in the in the comments, that'd be awesome. Um, get some content creation of different things, blog topics. There's so much stuff that you can create content for that you can share. Reconnect with your past clients. Call them. Call your really good clients if you want to. Show them new products and a new look and look at things like that, okay? Um, people are looking at social media platforms. They are, so targeted ads might be a really good thing that you want to stay top of kind of mind at, all right? It's easier to connect with your past clients and find new ones. Also, weird case, opportunities for families to have photo shoots because they've got time off because they're not working anymore. If they're germaphobes, it's not going to work. If they're like, you know what, life will go on, it's going to be perfect. Um, it's the advantage of doing outdoor sessions with the Zoom lens. I've already said that. Um, the other thing I would say, if you were struggling beforehand to get leads in your business and your business was struggling, you've got your work cut out for you. You really do. And it's really time to reassess your business and you need to really process, like really think about what it is that you're doing in this photography industry. Is it a hobby? Is it a part-time? Is it a job? Are you gonna get traction? Do you need to go to a second income? Um, another income stream for the time being? Thank you, Tash. Um, um, you know, what is it that you need to do to prop yourself up, okay? Now, talk about propping yourself up. Um, upskilling and investing in yourself and your business. Do the study you've always wanted to do. Learn new photography skills. Get into the studio and play. Just hang out with your kids in the studio. Learn new photography skills, new lighting skills, new editing skills, new posing skills. Spend time in your studio creating. Like the reason why we came, became photographers because we're passionate about photography and creativity. Spend some time just falling in love with your camera again and and your photography. And if you want to go for a photo shoot in the wilderness and, you know, go bush to take photos, you know, do that. But this is a really good time to also revamp your business. If you ever thought about rebranding, do it now. New website, do it now. SEO your pages, do it now. New products, new marketing materials, booklets, brochures, flyers, price list, marketing calendar, workflows, CRM, everything that you never have time to do, you've got more time up your sleeve now to get your business, get your, I say that thing, um, app entries, yes. Um, don't compare your front end with someone else's back end. No, that's what I'm not trying to say. This is time to work on your back end. That is what I'm trying to say. This is time to work on all those these systems in the background that you need to get in place that you haven't had time to get done. All right? So, get inspired, listen to podcasts, watch tutorials. One thing I will say about tutorials, the boys here that were um, photographers and videographers here, they're Khmer guys, so they speak Khmer. They don't speak English, well they do now, but they didn't speak English. They learnt Photoshop, InDesign, um, um, Premiere, all watching YouTube videos in another language. <laughs> so you've got no excuses why you can't learn stuff. The internet is full of information. Upskill yourself and get inspired. Three more quick things. Be healthy and productive with your time. Do something that you've always wanted to do. Go to the gym. Now you might not go to the gym, go for a run. Bring up your YouTube channels of Pilates and a yoga and do it in your lounge room floor. Be healthy, do a body cleanse. Do an isogenics cleanse. I'm sure there's plenty of isogenics out there. You know what I mean? Do all those different things. Just be healthy. This virus is getting to people that are not healthy, so do the opposite and be healthy. Eat healthy, all right? Um, just reading your comment, Callie, I'm still flat out and booked months in advance. You are, and that is awesome. So, as I said, some people will have no change and some people, everything will, will completely change. Okay, so this is where we're going to get practical. So I want you to grab, um, find an outdoor gym, yes. Um, I want you to grab a pen and paper. 
All right, grab a pen and paper. I want you to actually do some work for a second here, okay? I'm gonna read out some things that you could do on your business because I want this to be practical at the same time. Get onto your business to-do list. I want you to write now in the comments that 87, 86 people here, how many things are on your to-do list that you've always wanted to do but you haven't had time to do? Or do you have a to-do list, like a booklet of like, oh, like here's all my sticky tabs of all the things I've got to do. Write down, what is your numbers? What is your numbers? How many things do you have on your to-do list? And then I'm gonna give you some more. <laughs> okay, mark what you need to do. So write down how many things are on your to-do list in the comments. And then I want you to write down, name the top two things in the comments that you're going to do first. So I can't see anyone writing any uh, numbers here. Um, but what are the top two things that you're going to do first on your uh, list, okay? If you're not sure of what to do, I would say this. If you were to have a coaching session with me, what am I going to pull you up on first? That's probably my thing. That'll make you go, oh yeah, Mark's gonna pull me up because I've got no products on my website, I've got no client experience on my website, I've got no welcome videos, I haven't posted on Facebook. You know, what is your to-do list, okay? Okay, so, do your business checklist, update your portfolio, your room views, your products, do videos, do blogging, social media, direct email and marketing. Blog for the next 12 uh, months, all right? So what I would suggest here, is schedule your social media posts for as long as you can. So whether your post is going to like schedule your your like three or four or five things every single week for eight months in advance. So when things start to get back to normal, you don't have to think about it. One thing that you need to do is you know know your numbers, know your stats. It's a good time to dive into your business. Okay, it's a good time to dive into your boring side, which is crap and I hate it, but your profit and loss statements, your cost of doing business, your cost of goods. What do you need to keep? What can you let go of? Create your 12 month marketing plan so you can roll it out as soon as you're good to go. Network with other businesses. Now, networking might not be going to their businesses because you're not allowed outside, it might just be connecting with people online with Zoom, Zoom calls and virtual kind of meetings. It's time to connect with people, okay? Contact all of them, um, create a list of all of the schools, sporting clubs, kinders, fates, fundraisers in your area that you can connect with as well. There's so much stuff that we can do. The next part is the action steps, and then I'm going to leave you here because we're going 37 minutes. Oh, I thought it was going to be an hour. 37 minutes, not too bad. What I want you to do, and I don't want you to do it right now, but I do want you to do this, okay? Then I'm going to open it up for Q&A for a bit because I've actually got more time than what I realized. Write down a list as a brain dump, and master marketing people, you guys have done this. I've done this with you plenty of times. Write down a list of all the things you can do, as many as you can. Aim for 20, aim for 30. Get that creativity of ideas kind of going. Then mark on your list what is your quick wins. What is the stuff you can do really easy, like update your email signature? Really easy. Um, check your SEO. Really easy. Make sure your contact details are correct on your website. Really easy. Update your headshot. Don't do another headshot. What are your quick wins? What are your long-term goals? What do you want to do for the future? I want to do videos of all my products. I want to do a welcome video. I want to create a new price list. I want to revisit my price list. You know, what are your, what's the things that's going to take you more than just a day to do? Maybe it's to set up a whole new CRM, okay? Then the next part is um, highlight the ones that are truly going to move you forward. Highlight the ones that are really going to make a difference. Not just going to be like, oh yeah, that'd be nice to do, like highlight the ones that are truly gonna move you forward and don't do the ones and cross out the ones where it's just completely irrelevant, all right? So I want you to focus on what's going to make a difference in you, your business, okay? Then I want you to write down beside it to make a date and time that you're going to start and finish each task. 
Now, obviously, with lots going on, things are changing very quickly and kind of rapidly, but you need to make sure that you have set up a game plan so you're moving forward at all times. <coughs> okay, if you do want to ask any questions, feel free to ask some questions now. What I have covered in this is how to manage your cancellation requests, ideas on acquiring new business to offset the loss, ideas to keep your sales funnel full, what to do about the, the weddings that are getting pushed back, how to capitalize on, genre, on different genres, headshots, um, portraits, personal branding, etc. Create a plan moving forward with having that structure, making sure the business is sustainable through the outbreak, so cut back on your spending. If you need to take three months off because you've got the finance to back it up so you can concentrate on your family, then great. If you need to keep working, then that is your choice until the government goes, you're out of here, all right? Money issues, schooling and spending on the clients, the same thing, look after your family, look after your kids, look after the schooling as well. And if you're not the perfect homeschool parent, that's us. We are, I am not a homeschool parent at all. I'm gonna make sure that my kids are traumatized throughout this experience and myself and try to have fun and schedule fun in their day. Fear, anxiety, and the unknown, guys, this is where we need to be people-centric. We need to look after the people in our industry, in our world, yourself, your family. And we went through how to boost some income, do some in-person sales, do get some ideas happening as well. All right? So um, for all those people that have written down a question, there was one. Even though, even those of us who are busy and booked out, there will most likely come a lull. Yes, there is. There will be a dip of some stage, when and how long, no one will know. All right, I'm gonna finish with this, my parting words of wisdom. It's going to be a bumpy ride. You need to be flexible. Make sure you look after you, your family, each other. This community that we have is amazing, all right? It's a really awesome community. And we want to make sure that we're supporting each other now and the years coming ahead. I'm actually going to offer, and I haven't told Kylie this, so please don't kill me. But what I might do is I'm going to offer just um, just like a free accountability call um, every now and then to touch base with people. I really want to make sure that you're connected with people because this becomes really isolating. Now the Marcia Marketing Group, we catch up every fortnight for an hour, hour and a half, two hours anyway. But for everybody else out there who just needs people interaction, some inspiration, some ideas, um, then, then we need to make sure that we band together here and support each other as much as we possibly can. I hope you enjoyed that, please. Share that with other friends, with other family members if you need to, with photographers, put it in your groups, suppliers, feel free to share this. I've done this on the Mark Rosetto coaching page on purpose so that this can be shared, that it's not in the photography business coach page. So please share this around. I'm going to transcribe this into a blog post that you can also share as well. Okay? Um, just checking some comments. I hope things are good. Look after yourself. For those people that know me that I'm in Cambodia, I have some pretty big news to share with you, but it's not for a global news. It'll be on the photography business coach uh, page. Um, but I will be in touch with everyone very, very, very soon. Take care, look after yourself, stay safe, and um, we'll see you online. Bye-bye.